Welcome guys, and in today's video, I wanna talk about soft shading. Now, a lot of my videos, I explain how we have to put our black in first, and that's really important. But some of you have been asking, how do you do the soft shading? So in this video, I wanna address that. I'm gonna be working at the top of this piece that I worked on, and we're gonna be a lot of real time showing you exactly what I am doing. As usual, I'll be at the bottom of the screen, popping in and out, explaining what it is I'm doing. So if you guys are ready for that, then let's go. So I'm gonna be shading these antlers to start off with, and I'm using my lightest gray tone. It only has two drops, and the rest is distilled water, and I'm putting that in. At times, I will use almost like a shovel slash rotation to really push that light tone in there. And if you can see the skin, I mean, I'm, I'm pushing on these needles. It's gentle, but there is some pressure behind it. Do a little bit, wipe. Do a little bit, wipe. Watch the ink go in, see what's happening. Um, there might be a spot in here where you wanna add a little texture. You can dip into your next shade up and run the mag on its side and put a little bit of like, you know, some spots here and there to just give the illusion that there's more than just one flat dimension. And in my stencil, I have dots kind of indicating where I want to have these shades at and I'm pretty much following that stencil while looking at that reference as often as possible. And here you can see that brushing motion, back and forth, back and forth. Just trying to get that nice gradual, um, soft flow. And you have to be patient, you have to be patient. You have to let them kind of build themselves up. If not, you'll go too dark and it won't, it won't be what you want it to be anymore. And a mag is great to use because you have this wide paintbrush, it's, you know. You can cover a large area in this nice gradient, gradient manner. And then when you want to get, you know, a little a spot where you want a little bit more of a dark tone, you can run your mag on your side. You need to be gentle because a lot of needles cutting in one spot. But you gently run it on its side and you can get a little bit of a darker um, spots where you need them. And I'd like you to pay attention to my stretching hand, if you will. In this case, I'm pulling down. It looks like my hand is just resting there, but I'll wipe, and as I wipe down, I'll pull. And I'm pushing and pulling on the skin. It just looks like your hand's resting there, but there's more going on than it looks. While the other hand's working, stretch, hold. Wipe, stretch, hold. That's the idea. You can see it here, you see the skin being pushed in. I'm pushing the needles. I'm not driving them in there like I'm packing in pure color, but I'm also not just letting them dance across the top of the skin. There is some pressure being applied and those needles are being pushed into the skin. But it's like this, in and out, in and out. And that's what's gonna give you that soft shading. So there's no like harsh start and stop spots. And here I'm running the mag on its side because I want it to be a little darker over there in a specific area. And you're going to get more saturation running on its side. But you do, again, need to be careful not to overwork the skin. Running on its side can really uh, cause a lot of trauma, so be careful. 
And then on the other side, I'm uh, doing the exact same thing. I sped this up so that you're not stuck watching the same thing twice. Also here you can see I'm running at 8.1 volts. I'm using the CNC Q2 and a 23 curved bug pin magnum. And again, during this antler time, I'm really using my um, lightest tone and then maybe my step up from the lightest tone. So that might be like two drops in the lightest and maybe like five drops in the next one up. It's gonna depend on how you mix your gray washes. I have a way I mix them, but then I kind of change it up per tattoo just a little bit, depending on the skin. Now here, I have some trees that are in the background. Now I want them to, to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom as we give this slight effect that there's like fog up there and we can't see the bottom of the trees. So to do that, I'm just using that mag and I'm going in with a slightly darker um, tone for the top of the trees. And then as I start to define those a little bit, I'll drop down to, again, my lightest tone and brush, pretty much brush that, uh, that light tone up under the trees and kind of move it around. Right here is what I'm talking about, that, that brushing across the bottom to try to pull that, that softness down almost to nothing. And I say this a lot in a lot of the videos where we, you know, do things like this, and that is manipulate that mag. You can turn it on its side. You can use the edge of it, like, you know, just a corner of it. You can do a lot of things with these mags. Um, treat them like, like a paintbrush. Once you get used to using them, it, it's kind of that way, you know. What, what size paintbrush do I need? What, what size brush am I going to use for this piece? Um, the bigger the piece, a lot of times, the bigger the mag. Now up here, I'm starting to build these mountains. They're way off in the distance for this tattoo. I don't want a lot of definition, but I also don't want them to be one noted. So I'm building it up. Now again here, mag on its side, working in a few little really dark spots up at the top of the mountain where there's no light being hit. And if you're somewhat gentle on the skin and you're not really diving those needles in there constantly just grinding in, in, in real, really hard over everything, you have time to put a few different layers on your piece. You have time to gently put in your light tone and kind of see how that goes and maybe add a little darker here, a little, you know, stop, don't put too much in here to sort of um, build it up. So, you know, as you're going, you're looking at it a little darker a little less here, a little more here, but you're working in your lighter tones.
So here, like I talked about before, is I'm starting to shape out these mountains. I'm starting to put a little bit of texture in some places, gently a little darker in other places, just kind of creating like these um, high points and low points and light points and dark points. So that way from a distance, you get like a mountainish effect, if you will. And again, I'm just layering these mountains up. I'm starting light to make sure all of it has some sort of a tone over it. And then I kind of go back with just a little bit lighter tones and, and put a little texture in there. Don't mind my, uh, my hat in the way as usual. And again, at the same time, you're shading, you know, with your mags like this, kind of turn it on your side. You can pull some, um, some texture marks like that. Um, really these mags are pretty universal you can do a lot with them so I encourage you guys to really get used to them work with them and don't be afraid of them because they're a fantastic tool Now here on this bottom mountain piece here, I'm just going back in with some darker uh, shades and just little dots here and there. And at this point, I'm taking that darkness that's coming from the side of the antlers up and I'm just gonna blend that a little bit in with the mountains, almost like it's kind of a continuous flow. And also remember the faster you move your hand, the less ink is going to get deposited into the skin. The slower you move your hand, uh, the more ink is going to get deposited. So just think about that when you're making these movements. Here is kind of like a whip shading. I'm kind of pushing it and pulling it out, but it's still kind of along that that like painting style of of uh, shading. Now it can be tricky with these really, really light shades and when you're putting these light shades in a little lighter, um, you're gonna get a lot of redding. You're gonna get a lot of redding regardless, but when dealing with light shades, we're trying to see through the redding and trying to see that the, the ink in there. Again, be careful um, not to overdo it because it will be get quickly darker than you want it to. You're better off in some cases to go lighter than darker because for me, I set people up with a second appointment after the appointment so we can take a look at it, touch things up, and that's your opportunity to go, okay, I did go a little light. Let me put a little bit, uh, let me make that a little bit darker. Let me smooth up some of these spots. Um, so I, I highly encourage a second appointment when possible. And then here is the final piece. And like I said, from a distance, you can see those mountains and the, and the peaks and valleys or whatnot in those. Well guys, I really hope that you learned something here. Um, I hope that taking the time, slowing this down, and showing you guys some really soft shading, that you can take these skills or these ideas and use them in your own work. Again, I always pump that black in first and then really start building the piece from there. And light shading is just really important and it takes time to really see the ink is going into the skin, uh, to have faith in yourself, 
Um, it, it, there's a lot going on here. But nonetheless, guys, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And ring the bell to get notifications when I post. Also, if you want to check out some merch, links in the description. Appreciate the support, guys. And until next time, guys. Peace.